All right, guys, today we got a 2016 Nissan Versa Note. This thing's got a pulsation issue when you're applying the brakes. Had some issues with it, ongoing. We're gonna fix it today. Let's get into it. So this car has had some brakes put on it. It's had several sets of rotors put on, or at least a couple sets of rotors put on it. And it comes back with the vibration when you're braking. So most of the time we feel a vibration when we're braking and we automatically think rotors, right? And you know, we can definitely be right a lot of the time, but let's test this out and be 100% sure today because this thing's had rotors put on it and it's still vibrating when you hit the brakes. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring this in. This is a magnetic, magnetic base dial indicator. All right, you can get these with a uh, magnetic base on it. You can get them with a clamp on them, a um, pair of vice grips. And what we're going to do is we're going to mount this, and if you got the ones with the vice grips, you can mount it on anything solid around here, okay? You're going to bring this around, we're going to get it on this rotor. So this one's just going to make it a little easier. Just going to mount it on, turn the magnet on. So now it's, it's on there. Bring this up. Let's get it up. We can get it on the rotor. And let's lock that down. Get it to work here. There we go. All right. So... Now, what we're going to do is we're going to watch this dial indicator. I'm going to move this out of the way. All right. And we shouldn't see more than maybe a thousand. All manufacturers have got a different specification for this. So uh, if it's listed, look it up and see. Okay. We're going to look it up once we get done with this, but we're going to, we're going to spin this and see what this is. So, so let's see how much movement we have here. All right, that's quite a bit of movement. So what I want to do is just so that we can see exactly how much. And this is very difficult to do when this is down because it's going to want to move the whole thing. But I'm going to try to get this where it's kind of zeroed. All right. Let's see if we can see it. There's ten thousandths. That's about twelve or thirteen thousandths movement. So each one of these is a thousandths. So we're starting here off at the 70. We go. It doesn't really matter where you start this off, guys. You don't need to worry about getting it set to zero and all that. We're just looking for how much is it moving. This thing is clearly moving at least 12, maybe 13 thousandths. That is a massive amount. We're gonna look up the spec, but I can promise you that's out of spec, okay? So uh, let's go right here. Old Clay Whiton over here has got the spec pulled up. So run out. 055, so what, 55 thousandths? No. Oh, it's millimeters, I'm sorry. Yeah, so two thousandths. I was gonna say 55 thousandths would be incredibly big. Two thousandths, so two thousandths run out. So that would be, if we come in here, that would be two of the little lines. So if we had start off at the 70, it could go just, just to the second line right here we'd be just in here with all you would want that would be maximum right so we know this is way out so is the rotor bad i mean it's a brand new rotor it's been replaced a few times all right so we don't we don't know what's bad on here a lot of people would assume rotor and put them on there which is what's happened in the past on this car and i'll be honest with you we did that so you know this is one of the times where we didn't follow our own deal we didn't go through the data we didn't test it out we thought oh it's just a vibration when you're hitting brakes and we put some rotors on it we're gonna find out what's going on with this car. So let's go to the other side and let's look what it looks like. All right, so we're just gonna take that off. All right, Clayton, you got that, uh, you got that ratchet or that pry bar? Sure do. All righty. So if we wanna come around over here, cause I'm not gonna be able to spin that around easy. Let's look at what this one does. All right, so we're set up the same way. We're on the strut, we're locked in. This is locked in, we're touching the rotor. Here we go. Hard for me to see from this angle. Cameraman's kind of got you guys zoomed in there. You can see it way better than me, but it looks like we're in spec on that one. So, so this side's not the problem. We're good here. Just so you guys know, when you're doing this, Come on in, let me show you this. Make sure you do this. Number one, 
we want to be sure do this first put your lug nuts on snug them down make sure this is sitting flush okay make sure it's tight we don't have to kill these just snug them down just so this thing's not wobbling around obviously that's going to give you a bad bad reading so do that get this thing on and spin it now once we get it apart and clayton is taking that side apart over there we're going to look under this and i want to show you guys while we're very particular about a brake job um, let's go back over to the other side we're going to take this with us All right, I've just got that sitting there for right now because I want to show everybody something. So if you look at this hub, this hub's clean. No rust. Everything's good on here. Okay. So anytime we do a brake job, this is always getting cleaned. Okay. The inside hat of the rotor should be clean, smooth, no dirt, no dust, no rust. Okay. Now we don't have a lot of rust down here. I know a lot of guys comment on the cars we're working on and go, man, we'd, we'd like to be working on those. For those of you that are in the rust belt, whew, I, I, I'm, I feel for you. Um, but you got to be sure this stuff is perfectly clean in here if you're going to put a rotor back on. We want any any bit of debris that's in here, even the tiniest little bit, is going to cause run out. Okay. So let's come back over. Again, that rotor's been replaced several times. What can we? What do we need to test? We need to see if this if this hub is good, right? Because that thing's sitting flat on this hub. If this hub is warped, it's going to be the same thing. So let's go ahead, bring this in. Now this is a little more difficult because we've got to make sure it's going to go around the uh, lug nuts, the lug studs, and we got to be sure that it's smooth. We don't want to do a little teeny bit of something that's going to cause us to get a bad reading. So sometimes this can be fun to get right. Here we go. So we're at zero right there. Just happened to fall on zero. That looks like it's the one spot there. Come around and look at that. Is that not, now we get that? Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> All right. I liked it better on a zero. It looked it was cleaner to look at. But let's go to the let's go to the highest point, or the lowest point, whatever. All right. Right there. All right now, watch it. All the way to here, so that's at least 10. That actually went. So that's the most movement there. So now let's go. Kind of bounces a little bit there. That could be a little, little cut or something on that. But we can definitely see that this thing is moving pretty much the same amount that that rotor's moving. Now that rotor, so we're getting at least 10 thousandths there. Now remember, if we're getting 10 thousandths here, this is the diameter of this, right? If we move that all the way out here, we're gonna get more. As this, as if we were to move that all the way out, it's gonna get more and more because it's gonna be exaggerated more the further out from the center that we get, okay? So we got 10 thousandths to run out in this, in this um, hub. This is our problem. The hub is the problem, not the rotor. We could put another rotor on there and put another rotor on there and put another rotor on there and it's just going to keep coming back. So this is something that honestly we should have checked. We should have done that the first time we had it. Um, we failed. So now it's on us. We're going to fix this car. We're going to put a hub on this car and we're going to fix this problem. So um, yeah, I want to go through one other, one other check that we need to do with rotors that is often not done. So. We can, it, this is called either parallelism, checking for parallelism, or for uh, thickness deviation, however you want to call it, all right? What we're going to do, what we're looking for here is we're going around the rotor, we're going to take four spots around the rotor, we're going to measure them, and we're going to see if they are the same all the way around, okay? So, my youngest child, come on in here, Clay Wyton, okay, is in behind me going, we need to do eight spots. We need to do 10 spots. I don't know. He might have went like this. You know, it might have been 20 spots. I don't know. How many spots would you like me to do? 
because of the service specifications that we just looked up, it said eight. Okay, so eight spots. So I like it. He's looking up the service specifications. Here we go. Where are you going? You don't want to be in the in the video? Oh, he doesn't have a mic. Oh, well, we'll make sure we rectify that next time. All right. So here we go. We want to get this thing, get it to a spot where it's wiggle it around. All right. 864 looks like. Back it off. Eight six four. And all I'm doing is twisting this. This is not going to let it. It's a little, little clutch. So you just want to click it. Eight six five. So I'm not tightening it down anymore on any more on any of them. This is going to be the same. That's one good thing about having this. You see, it's moving a little bit. I'm wiggling it around, making sure we're getting it down in there where it was. Eight six four. I've lost count of how many times I've done it, to be honest with you guys. Eight, six, you know, we're getting the same number. Yeah, a little bit off there. So what's the specification on that? What's the, what's the deviation? These are pretty tight normally, specs. These don't, they don't want much deviation on these. So what do we got? One thousand. One thousand. So... We were within that all the way around. Now, you know, if there's a question, you can move this thing to the middle, okay? Some people say take it in the middle. I just take it at the lowest spot. That way I'm not trying to, to make sure I get the same exact spot every time. But, you know, if you want to, you just go to the middle of it. Whatever you guys are good, just make sure you do it in the same spot every time. 865 right there. And if we go around, we should get 865 in that spot. Just a little harder to get in that spot every time. But you can see it's going to be the same thing. So that's how you check. This is just, you know, guys, this is just basic brake inspection procedures that should be being done. Uh, you know, if we're checking minimum thickness, you know, can we, can we machine this rotor? Um, you know, if you guys want to see, you know, the process of, of properly machining a rotor, let us know. We can do a video on the process of properly machining a rotor. A lot of times it doesn't get done. And, um, you know, we don't machine a ton of rotors these days because Rotors are not really expensive, and on most of the vehicles, they're kind of a throwaway deal. I know a lot of you are going to say, no, I turn rotors all the time. I mean, I've been doing this for 40 years. Back in the day, we had rotors that were massive. You could turn those things three, four, five times. Today, you're lucky if you get maybe one, two cuts out of it at the very most, and then you're pretty close to minimum spec. And, you know, we're going to warranty this thing for our warranty. is five years, 50,000 miles. We want that rotor not to warp in that time, so a lot of times we'll put a rotor on it. European vehicles generally don't machine rotors. Um, again, I know there's going to be different opinions on that. You do you. I have no problem with it. So, but if you want to see a video on how to machine one properly, let us know. We can do that. That'll probably be about a 10 minute video and uh, good, good information. Um, but this is how you inspect it. This is how you inspect uh, run out. This is how you inspect for uh, thickness variation or parallelism. And also how you check a hub to be sure that when you put the rotor on, are we going to be good? Right? Or are we going to have the same problem again? So uh, we don't like to redo stuff. We want it done right the first time. Uh, this is on us on this one. We'll get it, we'll get it right, though. And, and we learn from it. This is what we do. We make mistakes just like everybody else. So. so any questions on that, leave it down below. Appreciate you watching the video. Uh, please give us a thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Hit it. Hit it now. We need those subscribers. It's slowing down. We want to build this up. We want to get this out to everybody. So hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment. Hit thumbs up. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.